So this is part of the form of Bendigo Mining Exchange. A lot of people walk through here every day but they wouldn't actually know what's upstairs because it's been hidden from public view for decades. So this is the, the hidden door, so we'll just head up here. So we're just coming up to the former Bendigo Mining Exchange. This building was built in 1872 and it's the oldest purpose-built mining exchange in Australia. It's a really important building. The Bendigo Mining Exchange is part of the Beehive Building. So the Beehive Building that is here today was built in 1872 and it's actually the third beehive building that stood on this site. The first one was built in the 1850s uh, then the second one which was a, a bigger building was built in 1864. Almost looked identical to, to the front of this one but it was only two levels instead of three. That burnt down in 1871 and nine months later they actually opened up this one. It was designed by Charles Webb so he was a notable architect at the time he also designed the Windsor Hotel in Melbourne, which many people will be familiar with, and the Royal Arcade, which runs off Burke Street Mall. Um, another building that he did at the time was the South Melbourne Town Hall, so really prominent architect at the time. So in 1871, when the second one burnt down, uh, there were around 1,300 mining companies listed in Bendigo, so it's hard to believe that there were that many at the time. So they decided to build a purpose-built mining exchange. So pretty amazing that uh, all this activity was happening and that there were that many mining companies at the time. Around 1900, there were three newspapers operating out of here. So The Age had a Bendigo correspondent who had an office up here. The Advertiser had an office here and also the Mining Standard was operating out of here. Allen's Music Stores bought the building in the 1920s and they converted uh, the ground level to what we have today. So those shop fronts that are downstairs, they were put in in, in 1929. And quite interesting shop fronts, quite a lot of money was spent on them. They've got black marble bases, copper framed windows, and there's around two metres of lead light windows above the shop windows that you can't see today. That's 99% intact, so it's all still there, just waiting to be revealed. This end of the, the mining exchange building, so the, which sits in the middle of the block, when it was first opened up, it was a cafe. So the, the kitchen was downstairs, but up here uh, was a fantastic cafe. It's got a fantastic uh, glass ceiling uh, up to the sky. It used to have a round void in the middle of the, the room uh, with the, the cast iron balustrade around and it had greenhouse plants all around it. So this is a cast of the original balustrade which used to line the voids that we had up here. Um, all of this went missing when they closed the voids and when we first took ownership of the building in, in 1999 there was a story in the advertiser asking if anyone knew where some of this had gone to and someone said yes we've got a piece on our veranda. Um, so they were kind enough to, to loan it to us so we could get it recast down at Castle Main and we've had it all redone so it's ready to, to be reinstated. On the first level there was a, a couple of rooms for the, the uh, traders and the, the wealthy uh, people of Bendigo to uh, spend a bit of time in. A couple of full-sized Alcock billiard tables in one of the rooms. Uh, lots of you know, plush velour and, and that sort of thing. Dhoni, the, the, um, the tailor, they, they had a, a room up here. Um, there was a, a boot maker and you know some of the, the businesses that didn't necessarily need the, the foot traffic going by uh, had you know, their storage or their workshops up here. In some ways that's fantastic because it's left a bit of a time capsule. So you know, this, this building now has the ability to be restored uh, and shown off again you know, with, with not too much work being required to, to get it back to the, you know, what it used to be like because you know, the building's structurally sound now. We've spent a lot of money on getting it to this stage. Downstairs, before Alan's music 
uh, purchased the building and made the changes, it was a big open trading floor. So from wall to wall, it was all open uh, and it had these quite ornate cast iron columns sort of in the middle, which is still there. Uh, there's only one or two of them that haven't been boxed in, but they're all still there. So it'll be fantastic to see those restored one day. From here on in, we're putting an expression of interest out for new owners to uh, come forward with their plans for the, the restoration. They're quite limited in what they can and can't do because the building is covered by Heritage Victoria controls. So we've got the planning permit for the restoration. So any new potential purchaser will know what they can and can't do up front and it's up to them to make that decision whether they can make it viable or not. If they can argue that what they're going to do is going to be positive for the rest of the CBD, we'll be taking those into consideration as well. As soon as the voids are reopened, so this section behind me here had three voids, so two circular voids at either end and then a big long oblong void in the middle, that just used to stream light down into the ground level. Um, once that happens, we think that the, the arcade itself will really really kick off as a, a prime retail space. It's not a big building um, and the retail spaces aren't very big but it's such a significant heritage building and once it's restored it'll be a destination in its own right so we think people will just come through here just you know just to have a look at the building. You know, we see buildings like the, the Sacred Heart Cathedral that have 100,000 visitors through there each year. You know, people are, are looking for um, historic buildings and a local sort of story as part of the experience of shopping. Um, so we think that this ticks all those boxes. One of the reasons we put the photo downstairs at the end of the arcade of what it looks like you know, 12 months ago uh, was just so that people could once again see what's up here. We think it will become one of the jewels in the crown of the CBD.